Hi everybody, it's Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. Today is Wednesday, September 18th. This is Floss 2 number 46, and I have so much to show you guys today. So first of all, thank you so much for all the comments on my last Floss Tube, um, which was a special edition Floss Tube about books and literature and cross stitch. I got a really good response about that. You guys um, seemed to enjoy that. And I definitely had a lot of interest in, um, in, in people wanting to know like what I'm reading and what I think about things that I'm reading. And I, I mentioned in that philosophy, but I always kind of felt like, um, in the past I, I didn't mention it in my floss tubes because my phone didn't have a lot of storage and I needed to keep my videos shorter. And now I have more storage and I can do these long, like Jesse Marie <laughs> movie link floss tubes. Um, so yeah, so I think maybe I will chat a little bit about books at the end and I'll let you guys know when that happens so you can peace out if you're not interested. Um, but I'll just put it on at the very end. So, um, but anyway, you guys seem to, to like that video. Um, so thank you. Uh, but this video is just going to be like regular cross stitch stuff, what I've been up to. Um, which is a lot because there's a couple things going on. So first, um, I kind of, I'm not really even sure what prompted it, but I decided that I wanted to make sure I touched all of my active whips in the year 2019. Um, I have, I have a few whips that haven't been touched since 2017, which was, I wasn't okay with that. And I have, um, several from 2018. Some are, you know, going on a year, some are a little less than a year, but I don't know. I just thought, you know what, that I, I, I wanted some kind of goal. Um, and I considered like one goal I considered was, um, I was going to try to finish a Chatelaine by January 1st, which sounds insane. But, um, you know, if you really devoted yourself to one, you could, you could totally do it in six months. Um, it was in the summer that I was like tossing this around. Uh, didn't end up doing that. Um, I want to work on my Chatelaines, but I don't think we're going to be getting one finished uh, by the new year. So then I thought, um, I, I came up with the idea of, okay, like, let me, let me see how many whips I have that I have not worked on in 2019. And then let me see how many days are left in the year and kind of do the math and see, like, is it feasible that I could actually work on all of these before the end of the year while also wanting to start all the things. There's so many patterns I've kitted up and want to start. And um, lucky for me, I this year started tracking in my little happy planner notebook. Um, it says floss tube info there at the top. And what I do is, um, I just make notes about what I talk about in my floss tube. So like my first one in January, it's like, you know, these are my whips. These are my finishes. This is what I bought. And I just kind of track, um, what I'm working on that way. And it's nice because this also helps me stay organized for my next floss tube. So like after I finish this one, I'm going to take a blank page and write floss tube number 47. And then every time I pull out a new whip or a new start, I just record it here. So I was able to actually, this was like a super handy log for me. I was able to go back and look at what I've worked on this year because you know, memories are crap. And you think like, surely I worked on that in the spring. I'm, I'm sure I did. And then you go back and you look at your notes and you're like, guess I didn't. Guess I didn't. So anyway, I was able to cross reference. This is becoming a very long story. I did the math and what I found, I think it was something like 50, 52 whips that I have not worked on in 2019. And then I looked at how many days were left in the year. And I realized that if I would just 
work on one of them at least every two days, I could touch them all before the end of the year. And I like that it was every two days and not every day because then I could like throw in some new starts in, in the middle of all that. Um, I've already fallen dreadfully behind on every two days. So what I'm going to have to do is actually just um, rotate through um, daily for a while. I'm going to have to give them all just one day instead of two days, um, maybe for like two weeks to get back on track. I don't know. I'll figure it out. It's fine. Um, but the point is I realized it was doable. And so I have a ton of whips to show you this video because I've worked on a bunch of whips, but I've also had some new starts. And I had a finish in the middle of that. Um, I am feeling the fall mood. I am, I'm ready. I'm ready for fall. I want to stitch all the fall things. And it's hard because I want to start all the new patterns. But I have this goal that I need to work on my whips. So, you know, we'll see what happens. This might all totally explode by January 1st, but we'll see. I would just love to start 2020 with like that clean slate of like, I worked on all of these in 2019, like hopefully work on all of them again in 2020. I don't know, we'll see. See how I feel. I like to just every few months, like kind of revamp like my goals and what I'm doing. If you all remember at the start of this year, I had a goal of before I could earn a new start, I had to finish two things. So it was like a two, two steps forward, one step back kind of thing. Like finish two things and you earn your new start. And then your whip list like gradually continues to go down. And I did keep up with that until about May. And then I was like, no, I want to start all the things and I don't care anymore. So kind of the boat I'm in now. Let me show you some cross stitching. Or do you want to see haul? Hmm. You know what? Let's do some haul because I have some exciting haul. I have, I have, I have some good haul. Okay. So first of all, I've been all up in the Etsy again. I cannot help myself. I just can't. I can't help myself. I needed some fall patterns. So I found this one and it's so cute. It's a boxer in a pumpkin. You guys, stop. And I know it looks really big and it's full coverage-ish, but it's 115 by 140. So it's not as big as it looks. How cute is that? Lincoln looked just like this when he was a baby, except he has a little white triangle on his nose. I'm so cute. So otherwise this looks just like Lincoln. I think I'm going to try to put a little white triangle on his nose. He's so cute. Um, also I dyed a bunch of fabric because I needed like very specific fabric for a lot of projects. And I think, I don't remember if I showed you guys all the fabric I dyed. A lot of it was for literary themed projects. So I think I did show you in my special edition book lovers floss tube. I don't know. I can't keep it all straight. I've got all these like piles and stuff. But um, anyway, I dyed some fabric for this is where I'm going with this. And since it's here, I'll, I'll show you. I'm not sure which side I'm going to use yet. One side definitely has like stronger... Uh, darker dark this side has darker bits than this side I don't know the stitching is gonna cover most of it anyway but got that and then I bought um, oh the designer for that one is um, it's on Etsy and she's called Alexa kiss this one is also on Etsy and I don't uh oh yeah she's called Rin R I N Rin Stitch and this is called Cauldron and it's I it's just perfect witchy Halloweeny stitching 
and it's not too big either. It's 92 by 117. And I dyed fabric for this one as well. It didn't quite, it turned out a little darker than I meant, but I still like it and I still think it'll work. So that's the fabric I dyed for that. I think it'll work. I hope it'll work. It might, it's a little darker than I wanted. I don't know, we'll see. And then I bought some Harry Potter patterns. I got more in here, let me grab them all. So, um, I had bought a pattern from a designer on Etsy called Tanya Amity. And um, it was this pattern and I showed you guys this. And it's called Fight Like a Girl. And it's, it's awesome. And I dyed some fabric for that, which I showed in my last video and it came out absolutely perfect. This is what prompted my whole fabric dyeing extravaganza was I needed fabric for this in particular. I got exactly what I wanted while I was at it. I dyed fabric for a bunch of other things too. So, um, I went back and bought some more patterns from her is where I'm going with this. And they're Harry Potter patterns. This one is called Trio and I love it. And this one is called um, Luna. And I love it. <laughs> it's 107 by 109. So it's a good size. And this one is Hermione. And I really love this one because it's like fall. So look how pretty that is. Oh, so pretty. Hermione reading under a tree that's like, I don't think it's the Whomping Willow. No. Well, it couldn't be, right? Anyway, she's, um, but it's changing autumn colors. So, so pretty. I need to find fabric for that. Um, I also bought, this one I got, so these two I got from My Bobbin. They're probably on Etsy as well. But, um, mybobbin.com, they have an English, you can like switch the site over to English. It's all like Russian, Ukraine designers. And, um, most of those designers sell on Etsy as well, but th they're just a smidge cheaper on my bobbin. So look there first before you buy from Etsy. Um, this one is called Hedwig. Love it. And I tried fabric for this one. It didn't come out quite what I meant, but I decided like it would work, but it definitely did not come out how I pictured it in my head. <laughs> so it's fine. It'll work. I'm showing you both sides because they do tend to look different and I don't know until I like sit down and decide to stitch it, like which side necessarily I'm going to use. So also from my bobbin, I bought this one called, uh, <laughs> I don't know, it's not in English, but it's beautiful. It's real big. It's 155 by 205 and it's full coverage. So what, here's what I'm going to do. I'm not, I'm going to do the moon, which will take forever. And I'm going to do her and this, but I'm not doing all this sky. So I wanted to dye fabric for that. It did not turn out how I wanted. Okay, I'm just gonna warn you now. Uh, this is some kind of mystery. It's it's some kind of Joblin, which apparently means it's a synthetic and it did not take dye the same way. So it's just, it. I this was as dark as I could get it and I soaked that mf -er. Believe it or not, these were dyed in the same these were dyed at the same time in the same bowl. This is Monaco. This is Joblin. This one would not take the dye. Look how different those are. <laughs> I wanted this one to be dark. <laughs> it just wouldn't happen. It wouldn't do it. So it's not, um, 
I'm not sure if I'm going to use it or not because it's not as dark as I wanted. I'm probably not going to use it because it's not as dark as I wanted. Also, the synthetic fiber of it, I don't know if it'll be you'll be able to see, but it got really fuzzy. So I'm probably just going to toss it, honestly, because it got really fuzzy. I did want to show, though, Amy Gable's stitcher on FlossTube and Instagram. Um, in one of her, like, maybe second to last videos, she was asking for fabric advice for, um, I think it was a Blackbird pattern that she wanted to do on a blue. And in my head, this is exactly the blue I think she can use, or she should use, but I dyed this myself, so I'm, it's not going to be helpful. But Amy, this is the color blue I'm envisioning for your black cat, blackbird, whatever it's called. You know which one I'm talking about. Because it's like dark enough to be cool, but not so dark that the black would look funny on it. I would send this to you, but like I said, it's super fuzzy, so I don't think you'll want to stitch on that. I think I'm going to toss it. Okay, so then, this is, no, never mind, I, I was going to say this is the last of my haul, but that's not even remotely true. <laughs> so, I went to the craft box in Wheat Ridge, no, it used to be in Wheat Ridge, no, it's in Wheat Ridge, anyway, it's, it's Denver, it's a Denver suburb. I went to the craft box, which is our consignment store that specializes in crafts. So cross stitch stuff, quilting stuff, stamping stuff, beading stuff, everything. And I actually went to get quilting fabric for a quilt I was making and I did do that. And if I ever finish that quilt, I will show it to you. But of course, while I was there, I had to check out the cross stitch stuff. So I found some treasures, I did. So first I found some John James Tapestry Petite size 28 needles. So grabbed those up because those are my faves. And then I found these, they're gentle arts. There's three of them and they all say limited edition. So I have no idea what colors they are. But you know, well, I can find something to use them in. They've been used. So someone, you know, stitched something with them and then donated them. Um, I found two Q snaps, an 11 by 11 and an 8 by 8. You can always use more Q snaps. And all of these, you know, are for like pennies on the dollar. Um, I just thought this was adorable. It's an old kit. It's called designs designs for the needle and it's called mice sewing and I just thought it was really cute it comes with like some oatmeal Ada and some floss I don't know I just thought they were kind of adorable it was two dollars while I was there I started messaging Kyle Reckemeyer Stitching and Sound because they had tons of Teresa Winsler at the craft box and they had several fully kitted Teresa Winslers and they're not my taste exactly but um, I like some of them actually but but these weren't to my taste but I was like I don't know Kyle collects these maybe he wants them. So I was, I was sending him pictures on Instagram and I was like, Hey, do you have this one? Whatever. And he was like, yes, no, no, but I don't want it, whatever. But there was one he wanted. So I got it for him. Um, I haven't shipped it out yet, Kyle. It's coming. I promise. Um, it was, was it like Noah and his animals or something like that? He said it was really hard to find. So he was like, Yes, please. So I'm sent, I got that for him. I left some others behind though. So if anybody's dying for some Teresa Winsler kits, go to the craft box. Um, but my most exciting, wonderful find at the craft box, the fully kitted Mirabilia 
This one is Santa's Magic. It's Beads, Krynik, DMC, Fabric, everything. Fully kitted. Like angels were singing. Oh. So in, initially I thought I would change the fabric out because it's just, it's fine. It's just kind of, it's boring. It's a, it's a little boring, right? Like, it's fine. It's the call, I, I believe it's the called for, I'm almost sure it is. And the called for is, I looked it up at some point. I don't know, I can't see it now. But I was like, you know, I was like, I'm gonna swap that out. Like, I, it's just, it's fine, but it's a little simple. Like, I'm thinking more like a light Arctic blue kind of background would be great. And I think that would work. But the more I looked at it, I was like, no, th although this is very simple, this will actually be really nice. So I think I am going to stitch it on this called for fabric because as you know, the pictures just never do these justice. And although that looks a little simple, I, I actually was able to find um, pictures like online of close-ups. This is so blingy, so sparkly, so beautiful that it, it really, it will be fine with a simple background. Also, I think that'll be more classic than to do like an over dyed or a hand dyed. So yeah, I think I'm gonna do it like just as it came. So that was my best find. It helped to make up for my biggest stitchy regret, which is when I was first getting into stitching again and I went to the craft box for the very first time they had a bunch of kitted up Miravilias and I didn't get them. I left them because at that moment in my stitchy life, I was like, well, those are beautiful, but I would never hang that in my house. I don't want to stitch that. I have no interest in that. There were a few of them. The ones, the three I specifically remember, um, one was a Santa. It wasn't this Santa, but it was another Mirabilia Santa. One was, I think it's called Christmas Queen. It's, um, she's in red and she's holding like a red flower like this, I think. And the other one was Gypsy Queen. And they were all fully kitted for like 20 bucks. I left them all behind, again, saying, I would never stitch that. I would never hang that in my house. To rub salt in the wound and make it even worse, I went to the craft box two more times over the next four months or so, and they were still there, and I still left them behind. When I finally, months later, was like, you know, I think I want Gypsy Queen. I really think I want that. I went back and it was gone. I remember picking them up and just waffling and waffling and putting them back and leaving. So that is why now I'm like, if you see something and you really want it, just buy it. Just get it. Um, tastes change. I love Mirabilia's now. I really regret not getting Gypsy Queen. Really regret. But this helped to soften that blow a lot. Okay, more haul. More haul. Um, a few more Etsy patterns. I had these, I had this saved. And then someone posted on Reddit cross stitch, like their finish. And I was like, yeah, I need that for sure. It's Thorin's map from the Hobbit. And it's almost entirely backstitch. Um, the, the designer is, let me see if it's on here. 
illusion. Oh, it says right here. This this is the Etsy designer. Illusion. Sounds like a Tolkien name, actually. Um, so anyway, I had this favorited and was like, eh. And then someone posted their finish and it was just stunning. So I had to go buy it. But it is like 40 actual cross stitches and the rest is back stitching. Um, and it was really affordable. It was like under five bucks. But while I was at her shop, she had a couple of other patterns that I went ahead and snagged because they were like $2. So this one is the White Tree of Gondor. Again, mostly back stitching. And this one is Smog from The Hobbit and also mostly back stitching. So I think those would come together really quickly since they're almost entirely backstitch. That might be all my, is that all? No, that's not all my Etsy patterns. I have some more. Okay, this is the last of them. I went to Mandarinks Design. I have like, I have at least 10 patterns saved for, from Mandarinks on Etsy. And I just like, I guess every so often I just buy a couple of them. I want all of them, but it would be like $80. So I just buy a few here and there. So I bought um, this one, which is Hermione. I'm not answering that. I hate unsolicited visitors. And I think who it is, we had some guys doing our roof yesterday and they left their ladder out front. So I think they're just here to pick up their ladder. I'm not going to the door. So here's Hermione. Lincoln! Shh. And then also from Mandarinks, I got this Harry Potter crest, which is really pretty. What sold me is the Deathly Hallows. That's super cool. So that was all my Etsy stuff. I randomly ordered from 123 Stitch. I went to get this pattern because someone on Etsy stitched it. It's Pineberry Lane Be Ye Thankful. And I needed it. So I went and got it. And then while I was there, I got this Cori Batacori called Halloween and cross stitch because I just thought it was real cute it's really big <laughs> it's like 210 by 240 it's way bigger than I thought but it calls for DMC and then um from threads entwined I bought bendy stitchy Hilda's Brew, because I just thought it was adorable. I've got to find fabric. That might be, like, my next start. I think it'll stitch up really, really fast. And she's got more coming. This is going to be a series. And then I also bought one other thing in that order, but I will show you that when I show my whips, because I started it already. The last little bit of haul. Um, I went to the thrift stores looking for books. And of course, I got to just double check if there's any cross stitch stuff. And at one of the thrift stores, I found one cross stitch pattern. Just one. Nothing else. What are the odds? This was the one cross stitch pattern in the entire store. Good Huswife, her tulip garden. Lincoln. That's enough. You better believe I was digging and digging to see if there were any other treasures like buried in, in the midst of all this, but this was all I could find. So I don't know if there was a whole stash donated and someone cleared them out and missed this one, or if this was the only one they had. And then I went to a different cross, uh, not cross store, a different thrift store. And again, 
Yeah, I think it was the roofing people. I see them leaving now. <laughs> I went to a different cross stitch store and again found one pattern. And what are the odds? It's a boxer. It's a boxer with cropped ears. So Lincoln has floppy ears, but I still love it. It was 50 cents. I mean, whatever. Okay, that's all my haul. Yeah. I've actually got some cross stitch to show you, I promise. Um, one last thing, it's not haul. Um, Stitchy Kindness, Lori from Once Upon a Stitch sent me um, past the stash on two tra la la patterns that she had finished. The first one is called Alice and go look at her last video and see you can see her finish. It's so cute. This picture does not do justice to this pattern. Hers is so much prettier than that. And then she sent me this other tra la la which is um I don't I can't pronounce that. It's in French. But also very cute. So that would be fun for spring and Easter. So thank you so much, Lori. I really want to do this Alice one soon. Okay. What have I been stitching? Oh, I've been stitching a lot because I had to hit some whips, you know. Um, you know what? I'll just show you my finish. I have one finish. So I wanted... I wanted to do some fall or Halloween stitching and I was chatting with Amy Gable's stitcher and I was like okay here's some options and she was like okay well you know which ones are calling to you and whatever and we talked it out and I decided to stitch Scarlet House Pumpkins and Bittersweet because it's small so I thought you know maybe I could actually finish that by Halloween or, or by Thanksgiving or whatever. But actually, it stitched up so much faster than I thought that I just went ahead and did finish it. This took me three days to stitch. And it's on 40 count primitive hair, old Massachusetts linen. And I did sub, I subbed some, some are called for and some are subbed, but they were all like in the spirit of the, the original colors. And it turned out so cute. And I've got a finished idea in mind already. So this pattern is, the model is, um, the bittersweet is done one over one down here, but she did include an alternate charting where you didn't have to do the one over one. And so I did the alternate because I wanted to get a finish. If I had done the one over one, it would have taken me probably two more days. So. It turned out smaller than I thought. And granted, I did it on 40 count, but it still turned out smaller than I thought. But it's so cute. It's super duper cute. Okay. So now whips. That was my only finish. So these are in no particular order. Um, after I finished Pumpkins and Bittersweet, I was like, I have got to get back to working on my whips. And so I just went and grabbed one and I grabbed Autumn Quakers by Rosewood Manor. Unfortunately, it was already late in the day. So I only got to stitch on this one for like one hour. So I got barely any progress. But the moral of the story is I touched it. Dang it. I touched it. This is on 28 count. Picture this plus. I believe this is Wren. It's the, it's the called for. Dubloon. Not Wren. Dubloon. I was looking at it like that doesn't quite look like Wren. Um, it's 28 count Dubloon with the called for Valdani. I bought the pack of Valdani's. And here we are. And this is just absolutely gorgeous. I did barely anything. I mean, all I, all I stitched was this. In an hour. Going from 40 count to 28 count, this was just, seemed absolutely ridiculous to my eyes. <laughs> but it's good. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay. 
Um, I started Stiach, this year's Stiach. If you don't know what that is, Google it. S-T-E-O-T-C-H. Stiach. I think we're on week four. I'm still on week. I just finished week one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, team. Letting y'all down. Here's where we're at. I really do need to get caught up. Okay, so Stiach. So I, the last two, I've done Stiach the last two years. This is my third. And this was the first year I participated and I was inspired to do a Queen Freddie Mercury finish because they always have a choose your own adventure at the end. So I made this one Queen. And then last year, I was like, I'm going to do Queen again. So I made this one Queen as well. Now this year, there's, if, if you've paid any attention to what's going on with Stiach, you all know, it's very clearly a Golden Girls in, in image um, that we're stitching. And you can't tell from week one, but with week four, you can totally tell. It's a picture of the Golden Girls. We all know it. What I think they're going to do is have us stitch the bodies and then the choose your own adventure part is going to be the heads where you could stitch the girls or you could, I don't know, people are like, it's going to be dinosaur heads or Jeff Goldblum heads or whatever. Like they're going to have some twist. And I realized when I found out it was the Golden Girls, I was like, how am I going to make this queen? And then it just hit me like two days ago. There's four go Golden Girls and there's four members of Queen. I'm putting Queen's heads on all of these Golden Girls. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. I've decided. It might be a little bit challenging to figure out how to chart that, but that's what I'm doing. So my there's going to be four Golden Girl bodies with the faces of Queen. And I've even thought of my catchphrase at the bottom. I'm going to put thank you for being a queen instead of thank you for being a friend. So I'm actually really excited about that, but a little nervous about trying to figure out how to stitch their faces, but we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay. More whips, more whips. I got out heartstring samplery stars and diamonds. And worked on this for one day. This is like a 28 count or 32 count cashel cream or antique white. Just real simple. Um, and I got a lot more of the border done on that. That was actually really fun to stitch. And then I got, there was no rhyme or reason. I was just grabbing these out of my stash randomly. Um, Little House Needleworks ABCs. I got that out and stitched a little bit on that one. And I got that. It didn't have very much done to start with. I think I worked on that for one day as well. Um, oh, I got out this one. I think I did. Maybe I did two days. This is Thistles. My sister is. And I'm doing this one with um, all like substitute flosses. Like from just random stash. And it's on a mystery linen. I think it's called. I don't know what it's called. It's a mystery linen. And I had to laugh at myself on this one. I actually got a ton done. I stitched on it for, I think, two days. Look how much margin I left myself. What the heck? I had to, I actually had to go over to make sure it was even going to fit. Because I was actually nervous it was going to go all the way to the very edge. It fits. Barely. Uh, and I do have to still stitch a line, like, 
two spaces over. So it's going to be like a half inch border. But it's stitching up pretty quick. It's going to be a tight fit. Um, I grabbed Snowflower Diaries Viva La Frida. I'm doing this one with silk. Dinky dye silks. So the funny thing about pulling out these really old whips, and that was like a 2017 whip, which I love. But the funny thing is, back then, I had never attempted 40 count. So everything's on like 32 count, and it just feels huge. And like stitching with silk on 32 count, like you go through so much silk. The... I much prefer 40 count. Um, this is R&R &R Linen 32 count in creme brulee. And this is how far I got on that one. I actually had to frog a bunch of this or I would have more done. I had to frog her skin because I chose very poorly. So that was the other thing I learned about myself. So. I went off, I sub dinky dies, but I went off of like the DMC conversion and look at Frida's skin on this one. Look how light it is. So I picked a really light dinky dies and I'm, I was, I had already stitched like an arm or whatever, you know, I started stitching. I'm like, no, like, why is this? Why is Frida so damn white? Like, this makes no sense. But at the, at, you know, two years ago, I didn't question it. But now I'm like, no. And I'm like empowered to be like, no, I'm going to use something else. So I ripped out all that skin. And so I'm going to have to restitch it with something darker. Um... I pulled out Sadie Wood Sampler by Barbara Anna because Scott Stitches in Spain was, um, was stitch, started his and he, he's like half done already. So I pulled mine out to work on it one day just in solidarity. So here's what it looks like. And I'm doing mine one over one on a 28 count mystery linen. And here's where I'm at. And what I worked on that night was to fill in this moth. It took me several hours to fill that moth in. But I love the way it's looking. But one over one, it's, you know, it's a process. Um, I've got Hello Pumpkin by Caterpillar Cross Stitch. This is my lunch project at work, so I only get to put like 20 minutes in a day. I gotta open up the Q-snaps so you guys can see. Um, so I am on part four of five. And the whole pattern's been released. It's so cute. And it, it's just, it's more stitching than it looks. And I just don't get to work on it for long chunks of time. I could probably finish it in a weekend if I like dedicated. And I might do that just so I can get it done. But it's very cute. Very cute. And it's all just simple DMC colors. It's awesome. Um, I pulled out Moira Blackburn Hope Sampler. I'm doing this on a 40 count sea fog from Lakeside Linens and I'm doing it with very random floss uh, silks and that's where I got on that. Okay. Another new start. Um, there is a wonderful new style. I talked about it in my cross stitch for bookworms last two. Um, so it's by the designer is cunning cross stitch. Um, go just Google that and you'll find their blog. 
and it's a free stitch along and it's a choose your own adventure style stitch along. It's so cool. Um, so the frame has been released and then January 1st starts the actual real stitch along, but the frame is big and detailed. So it's plenty to keep you busy until January 1st. So here's what the frame's going to look like. There's these cute little letters at the bottom. Hogwarts Express is up there. Hogwarts is up there. And then you stitch your own wand right there in the middle under the Hogwarts Express. And part of the stitch your own adventure aspect is that you roll um, a die, dice. I did this last video as well. Um, anyway, there's like six different handles and six different tips and then like six different woods kinds of wood and you roll your your dice to figure out like which one so I started on the frame and I got my wand done so there's my wand I used a variegated floss I didn't use the DMC that was called for um, it was closest in color to a mahogany wand. So I'm just going to say it's a mahogany wand. And then I started, look at my little owl. It's just, it's so pretty. It's really stitching up lovely. I dyed this uh, fabric myself and I'm absolutely in love with it. And one change I'm making is for the house color swirlies. I got some DMC Etwa, which is not what they called for. They just called for regular DMC, but I wanted to give it a little sparkle. Don't know if you can see it, but it's sparkly. And I haven't put in the green yet. The green one's like over here. But I got my DMC Etwa for my Slytherin green. I am a Gryffindor. Um... The DMC at 12 is awesome. It does, it stitches up really beautifully. Um, it, the, the sparkle doesn't always show up on camera or on a photo, but in real life, it's so pretty. It's super subtle. I have no idea if that's showing up for you guys. It's really subtle, but it's just really pretty. It's just a really pretty sparkle. I really, really am enjoying that. Okay, and then my last new start whip. So this came out earlier this, what is today? No, maybe it was last week. I don't know, whatever. Um, it was Thursday, I think, last week. They, they po uh, Lindy Stitches posted this new pattern. I bought it immediately from Cheryl at Threads and Twined because I knew she would ship it to me like the same day and I would get it super fast. And I did. <laughs> I just fell in love with this the second I saw it. I dropped everything and went and bought it. It's Emily's House by Lindy Stitches. And it's so, so pretty. And a lot of you seem to be going gaga over this as well. The verse at the bottom is so beautiful. Speak for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Social justice warrior right there, Steph. It's just so lovely. Such a lovely sentiment, a lovely house, a lovely design. Uh, it just really spoke to me and like hit me right in the feels. So bought it immediately <clears throat> and then last night I kitted it up and started it so let's talk about floss colors here um I actually had all of the called for gentle arts except for two however when I pulled all of those gentle arts a lot of mine did not look like this um I don't know if I got bad dye lots I'm not sure but the worst offender, <laughs> this gold house is charted in Grecian gold. You see how it's like a marigold kind of color? My Grecian gold does not look like that. 
Mine is like a greenish dull gold. I mean, on camera, it looks, I guess it probably looks better, but in real life, like it's not, this better not make me a liar. In real life, it does not look like this. I don't know how it's translating on camera right now, but it just wasn't, it wasn't doing it for me. So I subbed that out. And then this moon is mustard seed, which I own, but my mustard seed is really green and I didn't want a green moon. So I subbed that out. I think those were the big ones. I think those were the big ones. So just a heads up, like if you're buying the called for floss, keep that in mind. You know, dye lots can just vary so dramatically. Um, Emily C at Eclectic Possessions curated all the floss for this design. And, um, that's part of what I loved about this design was the color on this cover photo. So I wanted mine to look like this. So I made some substitutions so that mine will look like this instead of just the called for. So if it's really important to you that the house be that color, you might, your Grecian gold might be perfect. Um, I've seen people on Instagram posting their thread packs and their gold does look like this color. Mine did not, but I didn't buy the thread pack. I just had a Grecian gold in my stash. So just keep that in mind that dye lots are a pain in our rears. So I started this last night. I'm stitching this on 46 count. Woo! Um, under the sea fabrics in properly primitive. The called for is oaken. So properly primitive is nothing near oaken, but I did a floss toss and I just really loved the way it looked. Um, it's a green, it's like a, it's a, it's an age brown with a green modeling. And that's how far I got in one night of stitching. And I love it. So that's all my stitching. Obviously I've got to work on all my whips, but I also am not going to be able to put this one down. So I'm going to have to work on my whips and keep working on that. <laughs> okay. So one last thing about stitching, um, up next, what's up next for me. So I definitely am all about the Halloween and fall stitching right now. So I am going to go through my stash and pull out all of my like autumn, Halloween, Thanksgiving, fall, like anything in that vein, I'm going to pull out and I'm probably going to do a special edition floss tube for Halloween fall stitching. Um, but in the meantime, someone's already done that. So Amy Gables with an S Gable Gables stitcher. And I'm going to link it below. Amy Gables Stitcher has already done a floss tube like a week ago of all of her Halloween, dark October, fall stitching. And it was glorious and beautiful. So if you want to go see some stash flash, go check out her video. I'll link it below. And go subscribe because Amy's awesome. She has a really cute Boston accent. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about books now. So if you don't care about books, just shut it off. Nothing else but books. And then I'm out of here, okay? If you want to hear about books, stay. Let's talk about books. I'm not going to talk about all the books. I'm just going to talk about some books I just read, books I'm currently reading, and books I just bought. So I am rereading the Raven, the Raven Cycle series, which is a young adult series of four books. I just finished book two, which is The Dream Thieves, and it was just as good as I remembered. It was absolutely awesome. So 
So next up, I haven't started yet. Next up is the third book, Blue Lily, Lily Blue. Again, I cannot recommend these highly enough. The first one is called The Raven Boys. If you, if you guys want to check this series out, highly recommend. Highly recommend. So this is a reread, but I'm still loving it. Um, what else have I been reading? So I finished Never Night, which I also recommended in my last Floss Tube um, by Jay Kristoff. I finished Never Night. It was absolutely amazing. The third and final book of that trilogy just came out, so I had to go buy it. Um, I haven't read the second book yet, which is God's Grave. But um, I had to go buy the third the third book. So Barnes and Noble had a signed edition. So I went and got it. And it's called Dark Dawn. So I've got to read God's Grave and then I'm going to read Dark Dawn. So this is not a young adult series. <laughs> it's adult. Um, it's very cool. Um, how to describe it. So the main character, Mia Corvair, is an assassin. And she's seeking revenge for her uh, murdered family. And she's training with this crazy assassin, assassin church. I don't know what book two and three are about. Okay. She's going to get her revenge, I'm sure. So anyway, really good series though. It's really good. Um, but I've talked about those before. That's why I'm kind of glossing over that. So um, what I am reading right now is The Witcher series. The first one is called The Last Wish. I can't say this author's name. It's Andrzej Sapowski. So The Witcher is a video game and I don't play video games. So I had never heard of it. But Netflix, about a month ago maybe, released a teaser. They have taken The Witcher and made it into a series. And it looked so good. So I watched the trailer and I was like, I have to watch this show. I think it's coming out in October. I, I, they won't say exactly when it's coming out. Um, but in Netflix style, they'll release it all at once. I think it's eight episodes. So... Um, I was like, that looks so good. I have to watch that. And then I was like, you know, I want to read the books first because I actually heard really good things about the books. So, um, however, if anyone else is interested in learn, you know, in reading this series, I just want to caution you. There are two books that you are supposed to read before you read book one. Why did they do this? I don't know. Why did they do this? So let me show you because I got it right here. Okay. This is what I bought this book. It's called Blood of Elves because it says Witcher number one. So I go buy book one of The Witcher. And before I even get a chance to dig in, I see somewhere online, I think it was on the Netflix comments for the show. They were like, do not start with Blood of Elves. None of this will make any sense. Like you have to read the prequels first. So I went and did, so I, the, it's The Last Wish. And then I think it's, the next one is Time of Contempt. And then the first book, Blood of Elves. You can find it online. The point is start with The Last Wish. Just saying. Just, just word to the wise. Um, I've read 124 pages and it is super riveting and super interesting so far. I'm actually really enjoying this, but it's, it's, it's going to be quick. I think it's 300 and... 60 pages or something and I'm blowing through it really quick so um I will recommend this I will I'm enjoying it a lot but I'm super excited for the show super excited so then I got um some haul I was just gonna show you I, I, I bought a bunch of books so I'm just gonna show you three okay so at the thrift store when I was thrifting over the weekend I found this old book it's Vanity Fair 
I paid $2.50. So it came in this, it's this little mini book, which I'm like obsessed with like palm size books. Um, it came in this case and the case is really, really beat up, but the book is in like mint, almost mint condition. And it is beautiful. I mean, it's just like the case is beat, but the book is just gorgeous. It's got illustrations. It's so cute. It's super little tiny font. Like antique de decal, I think is what it's called when the pages are like textured. Oh, the top is even like oversprayed, like navy. It's so little. Look how little it is. It's so cute. Um, so the best part is there's an inscription in the beginning. Cause I'm like, how old is this book? Oh my God. It says to Melba, my sincerest wishes for 1932 Rose Oh, Berlin or O'Harelin. So this book is from 1932. It says it was printed in Great Britain. And it might have been printed a year or two before then. I don't know. $2.50. Beautiful old book that I actually am going to read. Okay, so then um, while I was at Barnes & Noble buying Dark Dawn, um, this caught my eye. Katie Rove's pool, There Will Come a Darkness. And it was half off for like, it was like, it, this book just came out, but it's a young adult and it was half off um, as like a special promotion. So I snatched it up because I had already been interested and at half off, I couldn't resist. What is it about? I, I don't know. I don't know. But it's pretty. I do judge books by their cover. And that caught my eye. But I'm actually hearing good things about this book. Okay, and then the final book to show you. This book also caught my eye. And then people have been like, have not shut up about this book. I'm seeing people talk about this book all over the internet and I was like I need this book uh, <laughs> it's called Gideon the Ninth and it's by Tamsin Muir this book is absolutely gorgeous it's got this black overspray pages it's so pretty the book is black too but it's just really cool but what caught my eye about this book initially <laughs> is the tagline at the bottom. Lesbian necromancers explore a haunted gothic palace in space. What? <laughs> like, that caught my attention immediately. And I was like, yeah, I got to read that. I, I got to read that. But what made me say I have to go buy this book, like, now and read it now is because somebody posted on one of my Facebook groups, I think it might have been my Owl Crate group, but I can't remember for sure. Um, someone posted on the Facebook group that they had posted on their Instagram that they were reading this book and their mother-in-law saw like the tagline about lesbian necromancers, flipped out and disowned her and her husband, the mother-in-law's son. I was like, I got to go get that book. I have to go get that book. Like, that is nuts. That is bananas. And then people were just kept talking about how amazing this book is. So I had to go get it. So if you are looking for something a little crazy to read, go check this out. Gideon the Ninth. And let me know what you think. I'm actually going to start this quick. I'm going to finish the Witcher book. I'm going to read Gideon the Ninth. And then I'll probably 
go back to the the Raven Boys um, and read the third book. So um, that's what's up next for me on reading. Um, let me know if there's any books that you have read recently that you absolutely love that you want to recommend to me because although I have 200 books sitting over here I need to read, I'm happy. I'm happy to add more to my list. I'm, that's fine. That's fine. Let's do it. All right. That's all I've got. Um, it looks like this was a really long one. I can't even tell how long it is because my eyes are not that good. Um, but thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time. And hopefully I'll see you actually before next time with a special Halloween fall edition of Floss Tube. Bye.